Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, you sound you sound great. Everything sounds great except for the asshole dog. Yeah, well, he'll calm down in just a second once he's done having his weird like transition tantrum that he does. Yeah, night zoomies. Night slash. zoomies, baby. Oh, Oop. I don't want to look at my own TikToks right now. Thank you. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another episode of Cheap Smut. My name is Katie Mizell. And my name is Carl Mizell. And this is a podcast that has just about had it this week. <laughs> I am done. It's a, both a blessing and a curse <laughs> that we that we record at the end of the week. Yes. Yes, it is. It absolutely is. Because on the one hand, it's a nice way to put the week to bed, so to speak. But on the other hand, it's like, fuck. It's like, I'm yeah. f- fried. Yeah. Yeah. The, I mean, I do. I look forward to it all week, so it helps. Yeah. To be like, oh, I get to record tonight, but also you get to the actual sitting down in front of the microphone, and you're like, Fuh. yeah, <laughs> G- uh, gird your uh, loins, here we go. Yeah. Uh, uh, but no, it's it. But you know, we get through this part. This is the ramp up. This is the slow crawl up the first big hill on the roller coaster. Yeah. Building, building, and then we. And then. Yep. Dicks and buttholes <laughs> or, or whatever's on the agenda. I don't know what's <laughs> Dicks and it's not it's not Dicks and buttholes this week. No, okay. Yeah. Is there nothing th- wrong with that? No, there's not. <laughs> 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 We've just been doing a lot of uh, MMs lately. We do. We, so. we we have been doing a lot of MMs lately. You're absolutely right. Well, that, I guess last week last week was not an MM, but the week before that and the week before that. Yep. And the week before that. Yep. Well, the week before that was a menage, a bisexual menage. Yeah. Anyway, how are you, baby? I'm Really good, all things considered. Uh, it's been a nice, w- a nice week of work. Got to do a little bit of traveling locally. Uh, you and I celebrated fifteen years. Yes, together. Yep. We've been married for almost eleven, but uh, this past Tuesday we celebrated fifteen years together. Yes, we did. And fifteen years since our first date. Yeah, since our first date, and it just keeps getting better. Oh, yeah, it does. How are you? I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. Uh, I mean, this week, this has been, it's, it's, it's interesting. This has been a bad week for me, like kind of all things considered. It's been not a great week for me emotionally, but it's still a good, like by pre-medicated pre-therapy standards, me, this would have been one of the best weeks of my life. <laughs> yeah. And now post post-medication in therapy, me is like, this week was awful. <laughs> I, I have been going back into the vaults looking for, yeah. for clips you know, to, to, to put out, you know, on the socials and everything. And I was listening to a previous episode where I was like, whoa, like it is so, it, no, it just seriously, in terms of like, you could tell just the weight of everything was weighing on you. You sound a lot freer and happier. Oh, it's, it's a good thing. That's nice. Yeah. It just, it was it, like, you could tell that just the weight of everything was on your shoulders. Yes, it was. And, and now that you have, you know, you, I mean, you've been going to therapy, but mm-hmm. now that you you have your medications, you know, back to the regular regular therapy, yeah, it's it's been night and day. So I understand what you're saying. <laughs> the, even your 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 worst post medication week is still like your best pre medication. Yeah, exactly. Week. Yes, that's exactly what I'm what I'm trying to say. Listener, if you could have seen the look on her face as I was trying to uh, traverse that mind, <laughs> don't fuck this up, dude. Don't say some dumb shit. I mean, the good news is I edit the show. Wait, so. But you can't edit my brain. No, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I could just uh, chat GPT an entire episode, <laughs> put the previous 28 episodes on the internet, and then just chat GPT this. What happened? Oh, Carl said some dumb shit. <laughs> and Katie got one of her knives. <laughs> I did. I did. So, so now it's uh, a, a solo host show and an AI because he has no tongue. <laughs> I would never cut your tongue out. I, I need know. that for stuff. Oh, it's true you do. The talking. The talking. I was of, talking about the talking. Of course of the talking. Yeah. Not 10 to 12 pages. Of uh. <laughs> but anyway, shout out Rihanna Burwell. Hey, Rihanna. Uh, and, and speaking of things with tongues uh, yep. that can't keep, seem to keep putting them away, and if you, if you don't follow us on social media, we have a new member of the household here. We have... 
uh, a dog now, another yep. dog. We had a dog until last year, our beloved uh, Jack Russell Terrier, Vinny, Vincent yeah. Irving Pupperino, yeah. uh, who was just old and we had to put him down. But now we have a new dog. Uh, he's part pit bull, part chihuahua, and just beautiful and dumb as a bag of hammers. So naturally, we named him Himbo. That's right. Welcome Himbo Mizell to the Cheap Smut family. He is the official uh, Smutco Industries I don't want to say mascot, more like pain in my ass. Yeah, he's not a mascot. He's just he's just the company dog. Yeah, he's the company dog. Yeah. The cats would take umbrage if... Uh, Absolutely they would. Danny's looking at me right now like, the <laughs> fuck do you think you're doing replacing me? <laughs> How dare you? Yeah, but Dan beat that ass today, didn't he? <laughs> he didn't, like I said, he didn't actually touch him. He just hissed him, hissed at him and swiped and Himbo was under a chair whining like two seconds later. Daniel does not fuck around. I, I was I was in the bathroom upstairs when that happened and came storming down. Yeah. Because I was like, I did, did he sever a, a tendon? Yeah. Nope. Okay, we had this dog for three days and we already have to spend thousands of dollars repairing him. No, nope, we don't. Nope. He just got <laughs> the piss scared out of him by a big dumb orange cat yeah it was a battle of the himbos yeah the household himbos mm -hmm. but enough about that okay what do we have on our agenda for this week this week i read a book called grump gone wild by cassie mint interesting yes i cassie mint is another one of my like you need a, a quick and easy palate cleanser read of some kind or you know you just you want to read something but it has to be fast yeah Cassie, Cassie Mint, working in some of the same realms as Jessica Kane in terms mm. of like generally expected content, but um, I don't think Cassie's heroes are as toxic yeah. as as Jessica Kane's are. Um, I really got into Cassie Mint for her um, her Big Boys series. She she did mm. a series yeah, of, I, you of mentioned it. plus sized. Yeah. Her and Jessica both did, um, but I liked I liked her Big Boys series. It was a lot of fun. So she so she kind of specializes in I guess what we could call smut tapas. Smut tapas, yes, exactly. Small bites, small plates, packed full of smut, but yep. in a little tiny a little package. package. Yep. This one was like less smut heavy than I y usually expect out of Cassie. It was it was a pretty slow burn. Okay. But for it's it's seventy two pages long, so it's not like anything's gonna burn that slow. I was gonna say so. It takes until like page thirty to. Uh, to yeah, get... for somebody to touch a genital or something. <laughs> yes, it takes it takes like till page forty. They're not taking. They're not trying to set the land speed record for smut like Step Brother Summer was. Hell yeah, um, I think that actually the land speed record for smut on this show is glitch yeah glitch by, got to it by brianna fa michaels yeah. yes got to it real fast yeah it started with it that's that was one of her marketing oh, that's right um one of her marketing tactics was uh smut on the first page smut on the last page all smut all the time wow hell yeah brianna just get right to it yep. don't, don't bury the lead bury the dick ah somewhere preferably warm bury it deep and, and moist mm-hmm or wet. Sorry, I know some people don't like the word. <laughs> I said it again. I'll bleep it. Don't worry. Ah, you don't have to bleep that. I know. Don't be silly. Okay, so anyway, Grump Gone Wild is book one in the Grumps Unleashed series. I think there's three or four of them. I know, right? <laughs> I love the word grump. It's so good. Um, I think there's three or four of these. They are all rel relatively the same length. Um, so they're all going to be similar. It's like eating like a like like popcorn. Yeah. Like small. Not not particularly filling, but you can consume a lot of it. It is 99 cents or available through Kindle Unlimited. There are no particular uh, trigger warnings this week. But once again, we are working with, as is, is often the case in books like this, wealth and money. So be prepared for us to just take some shots at the rich. Because <laughs> I'm gonna. Uh, eat them if you can, and uh, maybe listen to the listen to our back catalog while you're building a guillotine. Oh, uh, yeah. That would be a lot of fun. I think you would enjoy that. I know I would. So shall we begin? Yes, let's. All right. So this week, our FMC, her name is Felicity Lovegood, um, but she prefers to be called Fliss. Okay. She is your- Fliss or Fliss? Fliss. F-L-I-S-S. Thank you. Fliss. She is, I guess, you, you sort of your standard issue, young millennial, old Gen Z, somewhere in there. She's smart, but frazzled, probably has ADHD like the rest of us, perpetually underpaid, um, just getting by. She's pretty and dark haired, but she always has some kind of bright colored accent going on in the, for most of this book, she has pink streaks 
in her hair. Okay. Um, she is dedicated to her first love, her very old cat named Rusty. Love an old she cat. She loves him so much that she has him tattooed on her wrist. Hell yeah. God bless. I, ugh. She, <laughs> at one point she said... <laughs> She, like, introduces him. I can't remember who, why. She, this is Rusty. He drools when he purrs. <laughs> <laughs> he's just old and he s- smells bad and he's she loves him to death and I love her for it. I drool when I purr, too. It's fine. Yeah. But her other love is her boss. She is the personal assistant to Sebastian Bamford, with whom she has been in love for four years, the entire time that she's worked for him. But she's never done anything about it. She just has a big crush on her boss. Okay, I was going to say, is Sebastian aware of this? No. Is HR aware of this? No, nobody's aware of this. (laughs) She just sort of fantasizes about all the ways he could be fucking her in in the office if he knew and wanted to, I guess. She's really into her boss. So Sebastian Bamford, he is handsome. He is sort of... From from descriptions, he's sort of fit, uh, but I don't think he works out or anything. I, he's just sort of book boyfriend hot. Yeah. He has bronze hair, and he wears glasses. Bronze? Bronze. It's, it's shiny brown. Yeah. Like okay. a light brown. Yeah, I'm try- I was trying to picture it. But you got to get more interesting with your descriptions. Yep. No, you know? no. I, I, I just had to lock in on that yeah. thought. Bronze haired, and he wears glasses. He is described as grumpy nerdy and reserved self-described as repressed he was raised by east coast wealth and it's pretty obvious that that damaged him (laughs) a (laughs) lot it it will do yeah it will do um he's he is like perpetually clenching his jaw and standing up perfectly straight and worried about um doing something inappropriate that will make his family look bad kind of thing i do that too but i grew up dirt poor oh maybe it's just a white people thing it could be <laughs> no it could be i mean for me it's just you know massive insecurity yeah. and, and a fear of abandonment yeah. a fear of abandonment i guess but uh you do you sebastian uh, sebastian bamford so he's he owns this company i think what, whatever company it is is never really established but okay. fliss is his personal assistant um, she takes care of everything for him from his actual from the actual like duties to like making sure his plants get watered and that kind of stuff okay at the start of the book, Sebastian has called Fliss into his office to ask her a quote strange or ask her a strange request to make a strange request. He asks her if she will accompany him to a like an event that's happening at his family home over the weekend. There's some kind of like party, mm. but it's like a big thing. They're there all weekend. Are we? Are, is this a fake dating? Yes. It's a fake dating it's book. It's a fake dating book. Look at me, spotting yeah. tropes. I didn't, I, I didn't intend to do another fake dating book so soon because we've done like three of them in the past month or so, month yep. and a half. I downloaded this book a while ago thinking I was going to do it for the show and then I started to just put it on the back burner and then I came back to it last week without remembering what it was about. So it, it just happens to be another fake dating book. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's, it's very serendipitous I guess more than anything so he needs her to be his fake girlfriend he will pay her for this with like overtime I should (laughs) um for all of it he says that she can say no it won't affect her work it won't affect her job at all but he doesn't want his parents are like giving him a hard time about not having met someone yet his mom's starting to like talk about picking someone for him and shit and he just really doesn't want to deal with that so instead He's just going to have Fliss do it. Fliss is, first she's elated because he wants her to be his girlfriend, but then she's devastated to realize that he's talking about paying her to be his fake girlfriend. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Getting time and a half. Yeah. You know, not like yeah. relationship benefits. Exactly. Um, but uh, she agrees because she has a very real crush on this man and she's not going to turn down spending a weekend away with him, um, no matter what the circumstances of that weekend are. But because the Bamfords are old money, East Coast, buttoned up, talk like this blue blood blue blooded he's going to need to like get get a little makeover going for her buy her some appropriate clothes figure out how to do her hair. he's basically gonna like pygmalion her he's basically gonna realize he doesn't pay her enough money right <laughs> that's she, what i'm she saying can't dress herself appropriately yes. for a nice night out <laughs> yeah she is the personal assistant to the owner of this company but she lives with a roommate in a shitty apartment and can't afford nice clothes sebastian <laughs> he's going through all this going man i feel like there's a lesson in this all, all oh, this for yeah. me but uh there is a lesson, but I'm pretty sure the lesson he learns is fuck your secretary, not pay your secretary better. Yeah. Sebastian, 
Might have missed the mark on this Listen one. to me. Do better. <laughs> be better. <laughs> you could be so much better than this. Anyway, so yeah, he's basically going to Pygmalion her, or my fair lady her for, you know, people who don't understand that reference Sebastian one week later oh sorry that so it wasn't that weekend it was like two weekends in the future they were going to the family estate as it were weeks later Uh, yep uh Sebastian has a personal shopper in the office to dress Fliss um in a very appropriate beige dress they've pulled um her hair up in like a like a, a style that hides the streaks and he has provided jewelry to hide her wrist tattoo of Rusty. Wow. Totally. Just to hide the tattoo, not because he wants to buy her jewelry. He wants to buy her jewelry because Sebastian is secretly also deeply in love with oh. Fliss, but he has never acted on it because he's her boss. Uh, that, okay. And that would be inappropriate. But he thinks of her as the sunshine of his life. He goes to work just to see her because she's always so perky and happy. It's also the reason why he asked her to be his fake girlfriend. Because he doesn't think that even the the horrible Bamfords could, like, break her spirit. <laughs> He's like, I need someone strong. So it's going to be you, my pink-haired goddess. Now, is you there, know? Is there, if, correct me if, if we've done this before, is there a name for this trope where, like, he secretly loves her, but she doesn't know it. She secretly loves him, but he doesn't know it. No, I okay. guess... Because I feel like I, we've uh, done that a couple of times. Technically, time. I guess it could fall under unrequited love. Double unrequited. Double unrequited love. <laughs> um, but I think that's it's like it's like sister cousin to the to the miscommunications trope, okay. which is just like, bitch, why has nobody said a fucking word about this? Now, in this situation, yeah, you shouldn't. Y- he's your boss. Right. She's your employee. If she ever left that job, then yeah. But okay. Until then, no. So. The personal shopper leaves for some reason. I don't know why. Sebastian. Um, yeah, to move the plot along. Yeah, exactly. To forward the plot. Uh, Sebastian is then gives Fliss some like comportment lessons on like how to behave around his awful family. He brings up that they will have to like touch and hold hands to complete the ruse. Uh, they'll have to act like they are they know each other intimately. But he he doesn't want to do this because he thinks if he starts, he's never going to stop. Like, that's basically why he's like, I don't want to touch her. Cause if I do, I'll never stop touching her. Ugh. He's been completely gone for her for the past four years, but to keep it professional, he hasn't said anything about it. They, she agrees to practice touching with him at that point. Like just <laughs> let's, let's just actually like break the last few mo- molecular <laughs> yeah. millimeters of barrier between us um they have a few small touches they put they get close to each other their faces get close they share breath they hold hands etc cetera, etc cetera. it's very cute it's very like uncomfortably chased yeah it is it's uncomfortably chased uh but then they pull apart very quickly the personal shopper comes back into the room to talk about cocktail dresses and a uh, garden party of some kind like they need to have a bunch of different outfits for this fucking weekend away <laughs> <laughs> but again, th- th- this whole practicing thing is actually really smart, f- simply from the standpoint of if there is, like you said, you know, old money, blue blood, as as you mm-hmm, say they are, mm-hmm. then that's as far as like they're not going to have to like kiss in front of his parents no. and all that. It yeah. really just you know show us some level of affection, yeah, so that we believe you exactly. But don't you? She'll be sleeping in the guest house, fifteen <laughs> acres. You know, in the back, we'll have a town car take her to the guest house on the, in the back car. of the, in the back of the complex. <laughs> That's where she shall, sh- shall have sleep. Lucian pull around the carriage. <laughs> <laughs> sleep in the same bed together. You are not betrothed. <laughs> they actually do sleep in the same bed together. Well, fuck. But, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. So the weekend in question. They arrive at the Bamford Estate, which is like this giant old ivy-covered mansion on the East Coast somewhere. Fliss meets Sebastian's parents. His mother is very clearly displeased with her, with Fliss, as a, like as Sebastian's choice. But what the fuck's she going to do? Tell her to leave? So they make the most of it. Um, she doesn't smell like money. <laughs> um, Fliss goes into all of this thinking of it like... Uh, like it's high school drama club. Like she's playing a part. She's got to. She's got to hit her marks. She's got to say her lines. That's 
it. Studied with Gene M. Cousinow. Exactly. Hit your mark and say your line. <laughs> um, so she stays close to him all evening. There's a lot of like holding onto his arm and whispering in his ear. But what she's whispering is just jokes about this awful party and these, <laughs> and these terrible people with their, their, you know, old money sticks up their asses. At the uh, end of the night, they go to the room that they will be sharing. Sebastian offers to get her her own room, but she uh, or or he will sleep on the floor if she if she wants him to. But she insists on sharing the bed with him internally. It's because she's like, I'm only ever going to get to do this like once. I just need to feel what it's like to lay in bed next to this man. Yeah. Which just like, oh, God, babe. Oh, no. Are you OK? <laughs> it was so sad. <laughs> I was like, I just want to feel the weight of him on the bed and the his warmth reading you're radiating next to me. I was like, God damn, honey. <laughs> wow. Yo. <laughs> now listen, I know we talk about like the the MMCs in these books being book boyfriends. Yeah. But chances are, again, and I know that attractiveness does not equal, you know, yeah, willingness. Yeah. Or, but she's got to be. She's she, be has pretty. To, she has to have opportunities yeah. unless she's just everybody's so pretty. So everybody gets an opportunity. But for four years, you're not even catching some stray dick in a one night stand. I know, right? Something? Right? Yeah. Swiping this is, this right? is not how these books work. Okay. They never do. The okay. Har- the hardest thing for me to believe in this book right now is that his parents have no idea that this is his personal assistant. Like, I think after four years, he. Yeah. You would think that like she like they know her or like they've talked to her yeah. or something. But I guess Sebastian doesn't spend a lot of time around his family. He tries to avoid them I would as too. much as possible. Yeah. Why he's going to this weekend, I don't even know. Like, they never really make it clear exactly why this guy who has pulled so far away from his family won't separate from it completely. Yeah. But that's his that's his decision to make. It's so an, it's enough plot to hang some sex on. Yep, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. <laughs> yes. OK, so this is the only weekend she's getting to. If this is the only weekend she's getting, she'll have to make the most of it, even if the makeover and etiquette lessons break her heart because she isn't good enough as herself. So she spends this whole mm. time thinking that Sebastian wants this version of her or a a woman like this right. someone who is put together and polished and knows what she's doing around 19 different forks or whatever <laughs> they go to bed she does convince him to just sleep in the bed don't sleep on the floor jackass there's this really cute scene of them getting all settled in fliss pulls out her her e-reader and she starts reading pirate smut. She starts reading a book called Walking His Plank. <laughs> <laughs> I want to read that book. Um, Sebastian reads it over her shoulder. And when he realizes what he's reading, th- things get all like flustery. Um, <laughs> he's too horny for for this. Um, he, he can't possibly continue this whole weekend being this horny for his assistant. But he'll do his level best. Uh, eventually he pulls away. They have like a cute little chat. But then they go to sleep. She makes a lot of jokes about how the Bamfords would never have a book like this in their library. Mm. Uh, but if they did, maybe her mom, maybe his mom would loosen up. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you'd think with all this money, she could afford a nicer stick to have up her ass. Yeah, right. But no. maybe a, a a golden stick directly up the butt for Mrs. Bamford. All right. The next day, while Sebastian and the other guests play croquet, uh, which <laughs> Felicity thought was a fake game she thought it was made up for alice in wonderland she was like <laughs> croquet is real <laughs> yeah only the fucking uber wealthy play it though the only other the only other time i've ever seen croquet played not in real life but in media mm. is in heathers yeah and nobody and plays croquet like 35 years ago yeah. 36 years ago now. yeah uh, my grandparents uh had a croquet set but we never like played it the way it was intended we were just whacking well, the yeah. balls all over the fucking yard i feel like we had a croquet set when i was little and we were literally just hitting heavy balls with big wooden mallets we weren't playing croquet oh yeah i i, I think i think the last time we ever played with it was i i just got into one hard and i think it was my cousin todd took, <laughs> it, took it right in the shin <laughs> and made it bleed like one of those good kinds where, where you get hit right on the shin and make fuck it- you todd <laughs> Not really. Not really. Uh, but it was one of those kinds where you get hit on the shin so hard that it like breaks the skin. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I think that's the last of the croquet. Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, and then I had to run away from my uh, like 
seven year old he's seven i think seven years older than me oh so you had to run away from him so he didn't beat you up yeah oh but, okay but you know the shin helped, yeah helped me yeah <laughs> <laughs> couldn't catch you because he couldn't had a limp had one fucking leg. <laughs> <laughs> you see little carl just running yeah. Yep. Anyway, croquet. Okay. Okay. So, uh, Fliss, while they are playing croquet, Fliss takes a video call from Priya, her roommate. Uh, but just just to talk to Rusty, she just wants to see her cat. You gotta see yeah. Rusty. So uh, she has a she has a short FaceTime call with her cat before she goes back to Sebastian. They talk to Mrs. Bamford very briefly, who asks how they met. They planned in advance that they were going to say that they met at work. Okay. So that's what they did. There is they don't indicate that she works for him directly for him, but mm-hmm. they did meet at work. Um, <laughs> what what department do you work in? Uh, uh, business? Not this one. Not his. <laughs> that's all that matters, right? Not his. Um, I don't assist him in any way, nope. personal or otherwise. <laughs> so, but not as planned. Then Fliss starts making jokes about the sensuality of the water cooler and stolen <laughs> glances over stale croissants at eight a.m. marketing meetings. She's going rogue. Yeah, <laughs> it was very funny. Uh, she, I think she was actively trying to give Mrs. Bamford a stroke. Yeah, but she did not succeed in that. <laughs> After after they get done with that conversation, Mrs. Bamford then invites Fliss for a walk through the garden, which she goes on. The walk is not in the book. After the walk, which she made in spike heels. In a garden. In a garden. Yikes. Um, in a garden. I'm sorry. I just remembered the one time you told me that your ex thought that the name of the Barefoot Contessa show was the Barefoot Contessa in, in a, a garden. garden. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, not to be confused with Ina Garden. Yeah, I was going to say, no shade to your ex. I, I don't know her well enough to make fun of her. I just thought that's really funny. Yeah. The Barefoot Contessa in a garden. Hey, man, look, we have we all have those moments. Yeah, we do. We do. So Fliss was grilled within an inch of her life by Mrs. Bamford. She's like, she walks out of it like, I just got out of an, an interrogation with the FBI. Holy <laughs> shit. They had so many questions for me about January 6th. Anyway. (laughs) (laughs) Sebastian finds her nursing her bloodied, blistered feet on the grounds because the heels are not a thing you're supposed to walk in in the garden for two hours, Mrs. Bamford. Well, Mrs. Bamford, she's... She's an old hand at this. Oh, well, she's atrophied her feet yeah. in those heels. She can't even feel pain anymore. She's callous. She's lost two toes. She doesn't even know. <laughs> he apologizes to her for picking these shoes, and then he throws them into a rose bush. <laughs> <laughs> and her, her thought is like, God, I hope a gardener finds those. Those are really expensive. You could eBay those. <laughs> those are Louboutins, man. Those are really nice shoes. Then he picks her up bridal style, style and carries her back to their room to wash, treat, and wrap her injured feet. He feels terrible that he picked shoes that were so bad on her feet. Remind me to fire that, that personal shopper. Right. Whispers about carrying his girlfriend to the bedroom in the middle of the day be damned. Oh, yeah. So they, uh, as he was carrying her up the stairs, she was like, Sebastian, people will talk. And he was like, <laughs> let him talk. Because he <laughs> carried her up the stairs in the middle of the day. Fucking... I don't know if that's specifically the Bamfords or if that's just like the moneyed of the East Coast, but apparently you can't even you can't even carry an injured woman around. They might think you're fucking her. <laughs> I mean, so what if you are? Yeah, right. So he carries her for the rest of the day as they go from place to place. Very professional. Very not at all in love with your secretary, Mr. Bamford. In the piano room, which Sebastian calls the old people room because it's the quietest room in the party, they speak to Grandma Bamford, who I will refer to it for the rest of this book as Granny Bamf. I love her. <laughs> I love her. She's great. Granny Bamford tells them the story of how she fell in love with Grandpa Bamford when she was in the typing pool and how much it scandalized the family because Grandpa Bamford met his wife at work. So this is not the first time that this has happened. Like, it's a family tradition. Yeah. The, whole fe- the feeling this whole time has been like, oh, my God, he married a secretary? Uh, or like he's dating, he's dating a woman from work? Oh, my Lord. I- As if... The matriarch of the family didn't quite literally do the same exact thing. <laughs> I was going to say, it's practically part of the family crest. Exactly. There's a, just a silhouette of a of a man in a suit giving a sideways glance to a, <laughs> woman, to a woman near the copy machine. 
<laughs> it just says like Eris Unum Fuckum Secretarium. Right. <laughs> <laughs> And then just dollar signs <laughs> to fill out the rest of the yep, crest. Exactly, exactly. In an old um, English B. Uh, so Fliss and Granny Bamf Bam talk for a while. Fliss gets into the chat teasing Sebastian for not noticing her sooner. And then she starts saying things like that she, he, she just always wanted him to ravage her against the copier. And that's a little too real. That's a little too outside of the story that they have concocted. <laughs> and Sebastian is left like, oh, oh my God, I don't Crazy know. Talk. Crazy talk. Crazy talk. I am losing control of the con. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> 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 um, so that's when things start getting uh, more interesting in the book. Instead of going to the next event of the day, he carries her into the hedge maze. They have a full hedge maze on their property. <laughs> The hedge maze is the kind oh of thing that the hedge maze is got to be like the sign of fuck you money. Yes, it does. What it do really we... does. Although keep your eye out. There's going to be another hedge maze in the future in October. That'll be fun. Okay. Okay. Um, Good to know. Uh, Fliss is suddenly very brave, working her fingers into his shirt and saying that she is cold. But if he can get her to the center of the maze, maybe he can warm her up. Luckily, Sebastian has the maze memorized because this is his family maze. <laughs> I was going to say, he so could he's just like just rushing through the maze, blindfolded backwards. Yep. When they get to the center of the maze, there is like a beautiful fountain and some places to sit. And he sits her down and uh, suddenly they these people have like no more inhibition or shame at all. They've gotten away from everyone. And all of this, I can't, she's my she's my secretary, and I won't, he's my boss, just goes right out the fucking window. Um, and all it took was getting to the center of an ostentatious hedge maze. Yes. Ostentatious. Ostentatious. That's a good word. Thank you. Good job. But well, it's j just like Theseus and the Minotaur, you get to the center of the maze, you start fucking, right? That's how that story went? I'm pretty sure. 99% sure that Theseus fucked that Minotaur. I mean, I play a lot of Hades. <laughs> uh, In Hades, they're dating. Oh, they're definitely. They're definitely dating. Yeah. For sure. Um, so Fliss and Sebastian kiss, and then the kiss becomes a makeout, and then the makeout becomes a grope, and then fingering and hand jobbing happens right here in this maze. Wow. Right in the middle of the maze. A hedge maze hand job. Yep. Until they both come, and they both consider that to be the best few minutes of their lives. They don't say that to each other. It's just from both perspectives, they both said that at some point. It was the best few minutes of their lives. Um, Fliss is already picturing all the other places she wants him to come because he came across <laughs> her thighs and she's like, oh, God, next time you can put it on my titties or my back. <laughs> God damn, girl. <laughs> yeah, make plans. Maybe where I put my car keys. Yep. Who knows? Get crazy. <laughs> in your purse? You're going to come in your purse? No, she's got a little bowl. Oh, a little bowl. You know, she's got a key bowl. Yep. All of this is a uh, very big talk for Fliss, who is a virgin. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. Another one. There's another virgin. I don't know how old she is, but she's been working for Sebastian for four years as a personal assistant. So she's got to be at least 20 something. I at least. Yeah. And she's a virgin. And again, I don't care if you're a virgin. Be a virgin your whole goddamn life. Yep. The concept of virginity is dumb. But the cousin of the concept of virginity is dumb is the concept of virginity being somehow important is also dumb. Yes, yeah, very dumb. So this whole it happens in books all of the time this whole like idealizing virginity thing drives me nuts everybody stop it I, authors I, can you hear me knock it off i i mean the, 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 this is i mean the thing that i always struggle with when it comes to like virgins in these books is like she's 29 in a virgin like or he's 27 in a virgin like you can trip and fall into a vagina like i, huh. I just feel like at that point in your life like it should be, pre yeah. Like, but well, they, mean, but but then to go from zero, like it got was it was uh it was stepbrother summer, mm -hmm, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. They were both virgins, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden, just having yeah, they were having porn sex, porn sex, like yep. that's the. But again, mm -hmm. uh, me getting caught up in the the details. Yeah, I mean, there's some details that I get caught up into like that, which is why I called it out in like stepbrother a summer. Asshole, but me, not you. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for clarifying. But yeah, it's it's. The whole concept of it just kind of drives me a little bit batty. I can't take it. I Fair. really can't. Fair. The only reason, like, I understand wanting to wait to find the right person. I understand wanting to wait for religious reasons. But still, though, it's just silly. Any sorry. Sorry. Anyway, go getting back to our story. 
when they're done, Sebastian writes his clothes and picks up his glasses and puts them back on. And then he picks her up again, saying that they're going to be late for dinner. They have to go get Bamford ready. <laughs> Has he been carrying her everywhere? I told you that earlier. He's been carrying her all over. She's not even wearing <laughs> shoes because her feet hurt. <laughs> And he blames himself for buying those spike heels. I, so I know. I just, I, I just, I had to think back. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. He, yeah. Pick, he picked her up and left the old people room. And he yeah, he carried her through the head. Yeah, uh, okay. He's, he's been just carrying, carrying her the her? whole time, the whole time. Right. And I think he carries her like the whole weekend until he pisses her off, and then she's like, put me down. So when he says that they have to go get Bamford ready, like they have to be yeah. Bamford prepared for dinner, she shuts down. She interprets it to mean that he, what he really wants is the fake. Felicity, not the real Fliss. So she thinks that he wants the quaffed and like curated version of herself that he could bring around his family, and that she, that's not who she is. So, so mis- some miscommunication going on. Yep. Sebastian interprets Fliss's sudden coldness to anger or disappointment in him because what they did was wrong. He crossed a line. It was inappropriate. He never should have done that. He should have just continued to ignore his feelings for her because of propriety or something. I don't know. (laughs) You went and jizzed on your secretary. (laughs) So Sebastian, did you jizz on your secretary? It sounds like again. It sounds like the weirdest. (laughs) So you've ejaculated on your personal assistant. (laughs) Chris Evans sitting on a chair backwards. (laughs) (laughs) Captain America going. Am I? Is does that, so does that you committed sexual harassment in the workplace? <laughs> is this cue card right? Do I have to say that word? <laughs> yes, you can't go off script. Uh, We're the government. We own you. <laughs> Sorry. At the stuffy rich people dinner that they go to next, complete with bland white people food. It's even mentioned. Like there's everything tastes really bland. Coronation chicken. Yes, Mrs. Coronation chicken. Fifty percent of the sauce is mayonnaise. <laughs> I just learned that the other day when we watched it. (laughs) Gross. Uh, Mrs. Bamford. (laughs) I just learned that. Gross. Anyway. (laughs) Mrs. Bamford sees Fliss's tattoo. Fliss takes off her watch to show everyone Rusty. That's where she said, this is Rusty. He drools when he purrs. Uh. She holds up her wrist (laughs) to show off her cap. The table is immediately scandalized. Oh, my God, she has a tattoo. Oh, my Lord, she has a tattoo. But Granny Bamf, being the amazing woman she is, is like, I also have a tattoo, but I can't show it to you because (laughs) I'm in mixed company. (laughs) Fuck yeah, Granny B. Yes, Granny. Uh, Mrs. Bamford then declares a Bamford would never have something like that. And Seb shoots back, well, if I marry Fliss, then a Bamford definitely will have one. Yeah. Ooh. (gasps) Oh. Whoa. Oh. Have you ever seen somebody grow a spine in real time? <laughs> I have. It looked Sebastian. painful. Yeah, it, it, it did, but he did it. He did, and I'm proud of him for it. He stood up to his mother for the first time in perhaps ever. <laughs> well done. And then he immediately said, please don't hate me, Mommy. <laughs> Sorry, Mommy. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all right. We were going to watch Vines. We are going to watch Vines. Yeah, let's, do, let's watch some Vines today. All right. After dinner, Sebastian runs into Granny Banff once more at the bar, and he tell uh, sh- she tells him to lighten up, <laughs> uh, that he has a lovely partner no matter what the rest of the snobs say. The whole conversation is beautiful and lovely. I love Granny Banff. Again, I think she's fantastic. And this whole thing concludes with her, be- <laughs> with her saying, I am 87 years old. I don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on borrowed time. I can't wait for the day I get to say that to someone's face. I am oh. 87 years old. I do not give a shit. I, I I am hanging on by a thread at 45. Oh, I know, right? I am going to be a fucking handful <sighs> in my 80s. <laughs> I, Good luck. I'm going to have to print you up T-shirts or something that just say, call this number if he starts getting weird again. <laughs> After the dinner, upstairs, Fliss takes a video call with Priya again so that she can talk to Rusty. She and Priya have another chat very briefly. This is where they indicate that Priya is also in love with her boss. Priya's boss is, uh, Priya is book two. Oh. Not her boss. Her boss's twin brother. Oh. Yeah. Very interesting. Ooh. Some role play. Oh, God. I don't know if I could, how... Is it appropriate to ask a twin to pretend to be their other twin? No. (laughs) 
<laughs> no, it's not appropriate at all. Am I a twin? No. Do I have any basis for understanding what it's like to be a twin? No. That just feels icky. It does feel icky. So, okay, Priya and Fliss are on the phone. That phone call ends when Sebastian walks in just in time for Priya to say something like, now now go have have animal sex with that that <laughs> that grumpy boss of yours or something like that have fun blowing your boss yeah bye um sebastian comes over to the bed where fliss is sitting fliss tells sebastian that she doesn't want overtime she doesn't want to be paid for this at all it feels weird to be paid for this especially now that he's actually done sex things with her you actually say. can't pay her now I don't think that's right <laughs> anymore. It's not uh, over the table. Yeah, uh, unless you unless you want to get cool with a lot of stuff real fast, um, yeah. like suddenly being a pimp. Right. Uh, that feels, yeah. yeah, that feels weird. Anyway, Sebastian agrees to this on the condition that this is no longer fake. It's like I don't want this to be fake. <laughs> uh, he doesn't mean this weekend. He means for uh, he forever. This relationship mm-hmm. is now real. He wants to spend the rest of his life with her, or as long as she will put up with him. They share their joy. There is kissing, and then there is fucking. So Sebastian eats Fliss out with absolute gusto, my dude. <laughs> Dare I say, verve putting putting thighs over shoulders to get our whole face in there and bury our tongue inside the whole thing. We're going all the way. All right, good man. Until she stops him saying that she wants she wants him inside her the first time he makes her come. Okay. Well, that's too late already. I know, right? Yeah. Do you, did you forget the hedge maze? I guess she did. I guess she did forget the hedge maze. Yeah. He is aware that she is a virgin. I I think Maybe that was what she was alluding to when she's like, I want you inside for the first time. I don't know. I didn't I wasn't really clear. I was like, how does she how does he know she's a virgin? It doesn't really matter. He knows she's a virgin on her application. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Seemed wildly inappropriate at the time, but now it seems awful damn relevant. Question one. (laughs) What's your body count? (laughs) Question two. (laughs) You up? (laughs) W-Y-D. <laughs> oh, my God. The fuckboy application. <laughs> that sounds like a band name. <laughs> Hello, Cleveland. We're, We're the fuckboy fuck application. application. We're going to play our hit song, uh, You Up. Yeah. <laughs> yep, exactly. So he... As much as he wants to just, like, go at her, like, caveman style, he does respect the fact that she is a virgin and that she needs slow and sweet and that he does want this to be nice for himself, but also for her. He double checks with her before actual penetration. And she's like, yeah, I'm fucking sure about it, dumbass. (laughs) I've been in love with you for four years. And she says that out loud. I've been in love with you for four years. And that stops him for a hot sec. I've been in love with you for four years. Exactly. It's like, oh my God, me too. I've been both but with you. Um, I've been in love with you this whole time. That's wild. It's crazy Um, that we're just fucking now. uh, So the sex definitely happens. um, And it's of the we should have done this years ago variety you know like it's desperate and needy and perfect and wonderful all that stuff it it was really good for being the like pretty clean short insta love Mm -hmm. kind of sex it was good it was a good scene they come almost simultaneously but he does make sure to get her there first good man and then when he comes he nearly blacks out coming for so long he thinks that she's stealing his soul through his dick (laughs) <laughs> He's like, I don't, th- this happened. That this that shouldn't be possible. This has happened. This is too long. Fucking this- been there. <laughs> <laughs> I, T- I promise, I'm not stealing his soul. TMI, be damned. Been there. Yep. All right. Uh, but I mean, like, it's a good way to lose your soul. If, if, if you're I, gonna lose your soul, you might as well lose it that way. Yeah, straight through my dick. Exactly. In the afterglow, they have a snuggle, uh, but Fliss does make him aware that he uh, is gonna have to do that again tonight. So you know, like hydrate, get get yep. limber up, get prepared. Um, and he's like, "Oh no, she's gonna kill me. Death <laughs> by snoo snoo. You yeah. know, like what a way to go." <laughs> um, I hope that's how I die. <laughs> I promise. If they tell you that you have something terminal. 
w- I'll just fuck you to death instead. Please do. Okay. Um, <laughs> three years later, Fliss and Sebastian are now married, and they are once again attending the Bamford weekend party thing. But the atmosphere is a lot better now because Fliss has won over Mrs. Bamford, so Mrs. Bamford actually Aww. likes her now. Yes, and part of it part of it is because Sebastian. <laughs> told his mother you either get us both or you get none of us so act accordingly yeah. look at you you kept the spine sebastian good job Aww. well done but also granny bamford really likes fliss so you you gotta like you gotta like her or granny bamford won't let you in the will she's still you know? hanging on at 90 yeah she is so they chat with mrs bamford and granny bamf uh for a little while both of the matriarchs notice that fliss is not drinking and they ask them to please keep it quiet for now they are expecting a baby uh, but she isn't showing yet mrs bamford and granny bamf then go back to the party and fliss makes like she's going to follow them but sebastian leans down and whispers in her ear that they should forget all the boring small talk and he and she should meet him in the hedge maze in 10 minutes oh. and they all lived hornily ever after the end yay that was grump gone wild by cassie mint another enjoyable little perfect morsel of a read like, yeah you know, smutty amuse bouche yeah, yeah exactly exactly it's it's it's, it's, it's like tapas yeah. It's smut tapas. Small plates. <laughs> Shareable. Enjoyable. Well, I wouldn't go sharing it with too many people. Have a, I, have a drink and enjoy your tapas. Make sure that you ask if they're into that sort of thing first. Oh, well, yeah. Speaking of. <laughs> so, what are you into this week? Me? Personally, I am very into accessible gender-affirming care this week. Uh. My very best friend, a very good friend of both of ours, but my very best friend Murph uh, had top surgery this week. That's right. They are home recovering now. Everything went great, but I was just so delighted for, to hear that they told me they're everything about it was wonderful. And it happened so quickly. It did. It did. I mean, they decided that they just did they want their gender to be a question mark. Yep. That's, and they didn't want their titties anymore. So they found a surgeon. The surgeon was like, hell yeah, let's do it. Everything went super smooth. The surgery went great. Every nurse and person that they spoke to the entire time that they were there was really supportive and encouraging and lovely. And I'm just so happy. I'm just so happy for them that they got this done, but also that they were able to seek and find supportive and encouraging healthcare providers to give them the gender affirming care they needed. I'm so happy. (laughs) And that's what I'm into this week. Uh, Gender affirming care for all motherfucker. That's a tough act to follow. Sorry. Especially when you know what I've been into. I do all week. And I am extremely into that as well. Obviously Uh, they are one of our, if not truest best friend, uh, them and their partner, Nate. So congratulations on getting the gender-affirming care that you both wanted and needed. Mm-hmm. I'm into a song. Yeah, you are. So as Kate has mentioned in, in our personal lives many times before, uh, I, I have a very eclectic taste in music, and I, I, I have a fun, like I just, great songs tend to find their way into my life. And I have become obsessed with an Icelandic pop song made by a, a, a waif of an Icelandic giant, a <laughs> six foot ten man named Daddy Freer. Daddy Freer. Okay. Daddy Freer. Uh, and his uh, band Gagna Magnid, which is Icelandic for the data. And the song is called Think About Things. The link is going to be in the show notes. And it is it was going to be Iceland's contribution to the Eurovision competition in 2020, uh, mm. but it was canceled. But I'm going to post the video, and please go watch it. It is it, it's a song that he wrote uh, with his wife, who is also in his band, about the birth of their first child, but it's played more like just a freaking uh, sexy disco bop. Mm-hmm. But if you listen to the lyrics, you'll understand I can't stop listening to it. No, you the, listen to it like several times a day. The kids, our, our children absolutely love it. Our son thinks it's just the best. Our daughter will dance. And they there's some great little dance moves in there mm-hmm. uh, that are very easy to replicate if you're a child or uh, a 45-year-old dad of two children. And I just, I, I can't stop. 
uh, he's got another song that was his contribution to the 2021 Eurovision competition, which is called 10 Years, a song about his uh, wonderful wife. And it is also an amazing bop. The video features uh, a great, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Tokusatsu, sort of like kaiju oh, yep. uh, in what I like to call Disco Voltron. It's it's so good. And if you need uh, a three-minute pick-me-up, click on the link in the in the show notes and go watch that video. I, I'm linking to the the actual video, but the Eurovision performance of, of the song is out there as well if you if you want to see it. And then also go check out Ten Years as well. But uh Daddy Frere and Gagna Magnid, uh think about things. I, I think about things. <laughs> Daddy Frere, think about things. I, I I'm warning you now though, it will be you will walk around the house going baby oh my god we do it all the time <laughs> i would like to know uh just go listen to it and it, but be warned it will not leave your skull uh quickly no it won't and it's so good and you may or may not develop a small crush on a woman with blue hair yeah you may or may not um it's a great I think she's cute she's extremely cute her name's uh hulda hulda yeah hulda um it's not as good as gender affirming care no but it is it is really fucking good yes and that's all and it, super catchy and so goddamn catchy uh i think that's pretty much the episode i mean i, I know what you're into yeah. I know what I'm into. Yeah, I think we, we did it, we boys. Don't, we don't have a script. So Another one in the can, so. In the meantime, you can find us on social media. We are on Instagram and TikTok at Cheap Smut. If you would like to send us an email, please do so. I check it frequently. CheapSmutPod at gmail.com. The name of the song in this and every episode of Cheap Smut is called Nostalgia by Makai Beats. You can find it along with thousands of other songs free of charge for you to use with proper attribution at the Free Music Archive, freemusicarchive.org. Have you selected a book for next week? I have. All right, so we are rolling into spooky season. It's happening fast, <gasps> kids. Right. Our next episode lands on October 2nd. Let's get fucking spooky. So we are getting spooky, and we are starting with a book that I have been waiting to do on this show the entire time we have had this show going. We are doing The Holla Queen. By Emmeline Quill. Oh. Yeah. yeah. I know you've spoken I'm highly. So excited. Sorry. That's no, okay. You've been, you've spoken highly of it. I look forward to it. I have, and I am very much looking forward to telling you the story. I can't wait. In the meantime, listener, if there is a book in you, write it. And if there's fucking in it, I'll read it. And then she will come on this show and explain it to me for your entertainment. Now, I forgot to eat dinner, so I have to go eat now. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.